Hello, welcome to this video. In the last video, we saw how to configure SMTP server in Jenkins so we can get notifications after a job has finished. In that email, we, we can see the job status. Uh, it can be successful, failure, or unstable as well. And we can act from that email. So in order to continue configuring this pipeline, we need to find a way to, to start the builds in Jenkins remotely. Let's say I have a, a bash script where I do um, any, any preparation or press steps to, for the build, and then I want to start the build from that script. So how can we do that? Uh, there is a legacy mechanism in Jenkins called CRUMP, uh, which is a, a special token that is generated by the API in Jenkins. Uh, but to connect to that CRUMP, we need to provide the user and the password in a plain text or let's say it's not encrypted. In this case, I have it in a variable, but it's the, the password itself. So it's not secure and it's not recommended anymore. But I wanted to show you how the Chrome looks like. And the syntax or well, the, the way to, to get the Chrome is in this case, I'm going to put the output or the, or the Chrome itself in a variable called Chrome. Then I'm going to use the curl command as well as the credentials, the user and the, the password. Also the server, which is uh, where Jenkins is running at the moment, which is localhost and the port 8080. Uh, this is the endpoint to, the, to get the, the Chrome, which is called Chrome Issuer. And the API, this is the, the syntax to get the sorry to get the the chrome itself so i'm going to run it and let's see how the chrome looks like chrome this is the chrome is the name a colon and the the token itself but as i just mentioned the problem with this is that we we are using the user and the password itself so jenkins has provided a new way to do it which is called Remote Access API. Here is in my, my tab. I just uh, searched for it because uh, I was familiar with Chrome, but not for, for new API tokens. But uh, those are more secure and the, the functionality is pretty much the same. So the first thing that we need to do is go to the profile, user profile, go to configure, and we need to generate a new token here, add new token. We need to, to set a name, admin token, generate. And this is my token to connect to Jenkins. I'm going to copy it. As the message you said, uh, we need to copy because after we save it, if we get back to this configuration page, the token will be no longer visible. So we need to save it somewhere safe. I just copy it and save it. I don't want to save the token. Go back to the, the main page. And from the terminal, in this case, I'm going to execute the, the job from the terminal, but uh, this is just a, a Linux command curl. So we need to put uh, this command inside of a script and that's the way that we can automate more during the building process. So I'm going to use curl, a post action, then the user, which is admin user, then the token. and on uh, the server URL localhost, the port 8080, job, and my job name, which is smtp underscore job, and the endpoint build. This is all what, what we need to start the, the job. 
okay, just hit, there is no error, go back to the job itself, and we can see it's starting the fourth run. Is uh, starting from the remote command that I just run in the terminal. It connects to Jenkins. Uh, it validates the credential with the token and starts the job. As this is the job that we created in, in the last uh, video, and these are supposed to fail with the exit one that we place on the in the shell section, and send an email to report the failure. And we can see in the inbox we have a new email from the Ford build. This kind of integration is very powerful and very um, useful because, as I mentioned at the beginning, if we had a very complex script, let's say in Python, in this case uh, in, in Bash, or even in Java, we can interact with, uh, with Jenkins and provide all the parameters to the, to the job itself and start the building, the, the building of our application and let's say deploy it on AWS, deploy it on uh, a Docker, a Docker image or any any other artifact that you may may get from the from the build process okay this is all for this video i hope you enjoy it please subscribe to the channel so you can get more notifications when we upload new videos and you can suggest new topics as well stay tuned thanks